and Jehoiada was the leader of the Aaronites, and with him were three thousand and seven hundred, and Zadok, a young man, mighty of valor, and of his father's house twenty and two captains, and of the children of Benjamin, the kindred of Saul, three thousand. For hitherto the greatest part of them had kept the ward of the house of Saul, and of the children of Ephraim, twenty thousand and eight hundred mighty men of valor, famous throughout the house of their fathers, and of the half-tribe of Manasseh, 18,000, which were expressed by name to come and make David king. And of the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do, the heads of them were 200, and uh, all their brethren were at their commandment. Of Zebulun, such as went forth to battle, expert in war, with all instruments of war, 50,000 which could keep rank, they were not of double heart. And of Naphtali, a thousand captains, and with them, with shield and spear, thirty and seven thousand. And of the Danites, expert in war, twenty and eight thousand and six hundred. And of Asher, such as went forth to battle, expert in war, forty thousand. And on the other side of Jordan, of the Reubenites and the Gadites, and of the half-tribe of Manasseh, with all manner of instruments of war for the battle, and a hundred and twenty thousand. All these men of war that could keep rank came with a perfect heart to Hebron to make David king over all Israel, and all the rest also of Israel were of one heart to make David king. And there they were with David three days, eating and drinking, for their brethren had prepared for them. Moreover, they that were nigh them, even unto Issachar and Zebulun and Naphtali, brought bread on acid and on camels and on mules and on oxen, and meat, meal, cakes of figs, and bunches of raisins, and wine, and oil, and oxen, and sheep abundantly, for there was joy in Israel. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, I have the high honor and the distinct privilege and the great pleasure and joy to read in your hearing the Word of God at Isaiah chapter 6. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, pardon me, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. 
Above it stood the seraphims, each one had six wings. With twain he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another, and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the posts of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. And he said, Go and tell this people, Hear ye indeed, but understand not, and see ye indeed, but perceive not. Make the heart of this people fat, and make their ears heavy, and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and convert, and be healed. Then said I, Lord, how long? And uh, he answered, Until the cities be wasted without inhabitant, and the houses without man, and the land be utterly desolate. And the Lord have removed men far away, and there be a great forsaking in the midst of the land. But yet in it shall be a tenth, and it shall return and shall be eaten as a teal tree and as an oak whose substance is in them when they cast their leaves. So the holy seed shall be the substance substance thereof. Let's pray. Holy Father God, we pray in the holy name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for your eternal and holy word that speaks to our hearts even to this day about our present situation in so many different ways. And so, Holy Father God, I pray that your Holy Spirit would continue to help us stand it, to apply it to our lives, to apply it to our situations, and uh, to obey it, to love it, to cherish it, to meditate on it, and to cling to it uh, in these uh, perilous days in which we live. Uh, for Lord, we have no other hope on earth beside you. And that uh, and our hope is uh, built up 
our faith is built up through the reading of your holy word. So, Lord, help us to share it with others and help us, Lord, to always uh, understand and always uh, share and preach, proclaim, uh, and witness the gospel to others who don't know you as Savior. By your grace and by the power of your Holy Spirit, in Jesus Christ's name we pray, and for his sake, amen. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, this is Daniel White, the third president of Gospel Light Society International, with the Scripture and the Sense podcast, episode number 626 where I simply read the Word of God and give the sense of it based on an authoritative commentary source such as the Bible Knowledge Commentary and or the Matthew Henry Commentary and other reputable commentaries and study Bibles done by theologians who have the credentials, some of them with two and three doctorates, and who are gifted to teach the Word of God. Why not use them? That's what they're there for, and we thank God for them. We all have our gifts and our talents and abilities that God gives to us for a reason. And the gifts that we don't have, we need to use others who have those gifts. That makes sense. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. This podcast, beloved, is based upon Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 8 where it says, Ezra and the Levites read in the book in the law of God distinctly and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. The aim of this podcast is that through the simple reading of the word of God and the giving of the sense of it, the church would be revived that is my prayer, my humble prayer, is that the church would truly be revived and the world would be awakened and their eyes open to the gospel so that they can be saved from the wrath to come and the eternal burning hell. Through the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, which Jesus said in John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, uh, that is, perish in hell, but have everlasting life. So may I encourage you right now to believe in Christ and pray a short prayer and ask him to save your soul and to come into your heart and life and to change your life, and he will. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we are reading Micah chapter 7, verse 15. Let's pray. Holy Father God, please have your Holy Spirit to give us that anointing 
that ability to understand your holy word that comes from you, even as we read it, and then, Lord, help us to apply it to our lives and to obey it. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, and for his sake, amen. Ladies and gentlemen, according to verse 15, according to the days of thy coming out of the land of Egypt, will I show unto him things. Dear friends, I just read in your hearing Micah chapter 7 verse 15. Now here is the sense of it from the Bible Knowledge Commentary. In response to the prophet's request, the Lord told the nation through Micah that a time would come when he would again be known as the marvelous God when Israel came out of Egypt, God did wonders on her behalf, releasing her from Egypt, enabling her to cross the Red Sea on dry ground, and providing for her in the desert. Once again, the nation will have a great exodus from its places of habitation and God will miraculously move the Israelites into their land. This will occur when the Messiah returns and sets up his millennial rule. Shall we pray? Holy Father God, we thank you for a better understanding of your holy word. Help us to meditate on it. Lord, help us to keep hope alive in your second coming. And have the, the fact that you're coming again to purify minds and lives and help everybody to understand that we all will give an account of our our behavior and what we have done down here to you and everybody will bow the knee one day in Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake amen Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, this is Daniel White the Third, President of Gospel Light Society International, with the White House family devotional reading of Charles Haddon Spurgeon's magnificent work, the devotional book titled Morning and Evening. This is the podcast, and this is episode number 236. The scripture passage that the Prince of Preachers chose for today is Psalm 10, verse 16. The Lord is King forever and ever. The heathen are perished out of his land. 
Jesus Christ is no despotic claimant of divine right, but he is really and truly the Lord's anointed. It hath pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. God hath given to him all power and all authority. As the Son of Man, he is now head over all things to his church, and he reigns over heaven and earth, and hell with the keys of life and death at his girdle. Certain princes have delighted to call themselves kings by the popular will, and certainly our Lord Jesus Christ is such in his church, <clears throat> in his church. If it could be put to the vote whether he should be king in the church, every believing heart would crown him. Oh, that we could crown him more gloriously than we did, than we do, rather. Oh, that we can, oh, that we could crown him more gloriously than we do, is what Spurgeon said. We would count no expense to be wasted that could glorify Christ suffering would be pleasure let me say that again suffering would be pleasure and loss would be gain if thereby we could surround his brow with brighter crowns <clears throat> and make him more glorious in the eyes of men and angels yes he shall reign Long live the King, all hail to thee, King Jesus. Go forth, ye virgin souls, who love your God. Bow at his feet, strew his way with the lilies of your love and the roses of your gratitude. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of all. In fact, I think we'll sing that beautiful song, one of my favorite hymns in the service. Uh, uh, that we're going to have later. Moreover, our Lord Jesus is King in Zion by right of conquest. He has taken and carried by storm the hearts of his people and has slain their enemies who held them in cruel bondage. In the Red Sea of his own blood, our Redeemer has drowned the Pharaoh of our sins. Shall he not be king in Jeshurun? He has delivered us from the iron yoke and heavy curse of the law. Shall not the liberator be crowned? We are his portion, whom he has taken out of the hand of the Amorite with his sword and with his bow. Uh, who shall snatch his conquest from his hand? All hail, King Jesus, we gladly own thy gentle sway. Rule in our hearts forever, thou lovely Prince of Peace. We pray, and I'm adding that we pray, I just couldn't help it. But anyway, we are going to pray right now. Holy Father God, we praise you and we thank you so much <clears throat> for all of your holy word. Thank you for giving us a mind <clears throat> to stock up our hearts and our minds and spirits with your holy word. 
by the power of your anointing, your Holy Spirit, help us to continue to meditate on your Holy Word and to understand it and to see new insights and revelations and applications to our own lives and to share it with others and to witness your gospel and to share your gospel and to preach your gospel to others. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. What a fellowship. What a fellowship. What a joy divine. <clears throat> what a fellowship. What a joy divine. Eating on the everlasting. Oh, I'm singing like you mean it. What a lesson is. What a peace is mine. Eating on the everlasting. Sing on, <clears throat> leaning. Oh, I'm leaning, safe and secure from all along. Leaning. Oh, I'm leaning, leaning on the everlasting. Oh, sing it like you mean it. Oh, how sweet to walk in this pilgrim way, leaning on the everlasting on. Oh, how right the path grows from the day, leaning on the everlasting on. Oh, everybody sing it like you mean it. Lean, yes, I'm leaning, I'm leaning, yes, I'm leaning, safe and secure from all along. I'm leaning, yes, I'm leaning, I'm leaning, yes, I'm leaning, leaning on the everlasting, on oh, sing it like you mean it. What? Oh, and what have I to fear leaning on the everlasting arms? I have blessed peace with my Lord so near leaning on the everlasting arms. I'm leaning, yes, I'm leaning, I'm leaning, yes, I'm leaning, safe and secure from all along. I'm leaning, yes, I'm leaning, I'm leaning, yes, I'm leaning, leaning on the everlasting. One more time. <clears throat> yes, I'm I'm leaning, yes, I'm leaning, I'm leaning, yes, I'm leaning, if and secure from all along. Leaning, yes, I'm leaning, I'm leaning, yes, I'm leaning, leaning on the everlasting on. I'm leaning, yes, I'm leaning, I'm leaning, yes, I'm leaning, if and secure from all along. <clears throat> I'm leaning, yes, I'm leaning, I'm leaning, yes, I'm leaning, leaning on the everlasting on. Oh, <laughs> yeah, man.